is women in leadership. I have one sitting beside me. She's in leadership. But aren't you? Uh, women in leadership. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so women are critical and major stakeholders in the development project of any society. Globally, the issue of issues of women, marginalization and low participation in political leadership and decision making has been attracting a lot of attention from scholars. Although women and men have different biological and physiological makeups, they may share common features with men in terms of educational qualification, socioeconomic status, occupation amongst others, yet they are marginalized in virtually all spheres of public life. Why is that so? Is it that the men do not care or is it the women um, it, putting a clog in their own wheel of progress? The women are used to saying that the woman's place is in the kitchen. They are used to it? Yeah. Well, okay. And they want to live it all the time. Well, to help us discuss women in leadership, we have here in the studio Hansatu Adebite, Executive Director, Women in Management, Business and Public Service. Welcome. Thank you very much. And how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Permit me to say this publicly. I love your hair. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now, that, that, that's, that is not in any way marginalizing you, is it? <laughs> not at all, not at all, not at all. Okay, so real quick, how is it that women are so critical to the building and development of any society, indeed, as I say, from the home? Yes. The, the, let's start from that because that's what I'm sure that's what you're going to start. <laughs> but then when it comes out to public life, yes. they almost always get pushed to the side. Well, I think uh, there has been a lot of research recently uh, or in recent times uh, to just look at just the entire scope of um, the contribution of women uh, in society, in business, in uh, homes. And uh, it has become so critical um, um, from the global goals of the United Nations uh, and through a research that has been done at least as recently as March of uh, this year that there are six critical areas that... Um, will help towards the development of our global goals, um, global goals uh, uh, by the year 2030. And um, it was discovered that in these six areas that where women are predominantly involved, it contributes significantly to nation building, it improves profitability. Um, those uh, six areas include innovation, for example, uh, innovation in industries, in societies. Uh, they include long-term thinking, strategic thinking. Uh, you know, when you bring men and women in a room and there is a sort of balance, you find out that people are seeing things from different angles, mm -hmm. as against um, when there's a gender, uh, uh, maybe one-sided gender, uh, popul um, population. Mm. Uh, also transparency. When you have uh, a team that has enough women, uh, it has been proven that at least there is more transparency in the room and the corporate governance structure tends to work more effectively. Again, in the area of environmental management, uh, it has been seen that women are very interested in um, social impact goals of organizations and contribute significantly to that. I think there's something about, just like you said, uh, the home, the communities. Women just want to see um, their communities and their environments grow um, significantly and be safer for all. And then, of course, social inclusiveness. And so I think uh, statistically it has been seen that there is an increase of about 19% of profitability for organizations that have that gender uh, balance, if I must say. Mm. Now, um, 2000, 2019 is around the corner. Yes. So we can't talk about women in leadership without talking about women in politics. Very true. I mean, that is the height of leadership in any nation. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts about the women who have shown interest in throwing their hat into the ring? <laughs> Well, I, I, I think um, we've started a lot of discussions and dialogues in this regard. Uh, uh, well, I, if I may say, Wimby's uh, United Nations Women, uh, Women in Politics, there are so many forums. And we have actually asked this uh, conversation, um, we had this conversation, we've come into the room and actually discussed it and asked, why would I vote 
uh, you would I vote you because you are simply a woman? Mm -hmm. Or would, am I looking for capability and competency? And I think one of the key issues we're having in this nation is everybody's tired. Everybody wants to see some progress. Now, women tend to be emotionally drawn to solving problems. But one of the things we are all trying to do now is to look at the preparedness of women. One, are they prepared? Two, are they the best solution? Mm -hmm. what, are, what is the track record that they're bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. What have they done on a smaller scale? And I think within the context of most of these things, you see women that really genuinely have the integrity, but there are a lot of things that are working against them. So for example now, an understanding of party ideologies. I would say personally that I believe that the immediate solution may not necessarily be having a woman at the top. It may even be start from local government. No, apart from even the local government, the parties. <laughs> the women are not significantly in the parties. If you check the percentage of women within the party structure, uh, where decisions are made, mm -hmm. where, um, you know, even before an election, all these decisions are made, you find out that you don't even have enough m women there. So some of these women, I would advise, need to go into the party, understand the structure, be uh, relevant, be, uh, attend ward meetings, start from there. Let your voice be heard. Let people begin to see what you are doing. Pick up community projects. Understand the challenges. Yes, we know people going, I mean, money is a big thing in uh, Nigeria, but I think... Again, I personally would say uh, it's not necessarily just about women. I think it's more about who is competent enough, who has the solutions, who has done their homework and is ready for this. Uh, and again, well, a lot of women may agree or not agree with me, but again, we've looked at so many other things that uh, probably the women in the private sector have gotten well, uh, have done very well. Things like understanding that you are a brand when you are going into politics. And so does your brand represent what you're selling? What is your campaign message? Does it resonate with the people? Are we emotionally connected with what you are saying or what you are doing? Uh, there are so many things I think women just have to put in place. And I feel it's a long-term goal. I know a lot of women have done so much over the years for this purpose. But I, I still feel... Uh, we need to be more strategic. Mm. We need to be more uh, united. Uh, different groups, there, the consultations are enough, but now in being active, there are certain things we need to do better. And I think we can learn more from the private sector because we have a lot of uh, women in the private sector that have broken through brass, not even only glass. <laughs> 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 now, don't you, don't you think that what you have just said also refers to the men? Because a lot of unknown men come out, they want to be president, and you wonder, who is he? Yes. What has he done? So, I mean, on the whole, the advice to the electorate should be, you should elect, vote for people who have proven themselves, hmm? whether male or female. Yes. Shouldn't that be the, 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 the preaching? Yeah, that's my point exactly, that I think um, the competency, the track record, they're very important. Um, you know, we all know that uh, if you bring the unit of a home, even to run a home is not a child's play. And uh, Nigeria is such a complex nation. And uh, you need more than tenacity to rule a nation like this. And that is why I talk about track record. I know that there are a lot of men that don't have uh, track records. And that is why we're still in the uh, situation that we are in. Now we are looking for people, whether male or female, that do have something to bring to the table. And I pray that uh, those of us that are voting this time around will look beyond the bag of rice and the money and all the gimmicks of politics and actually be focused on who has the potential to take us to the promised land if there is any. Okay. Now, there is. <laughs> <laughs> there's something here. Five key factors relating to the practice of politics in Nigeria which have constrained women's political representation. Yes. Namely, method of candidate nomination, excessive use of money in politics, yes. influence of party elders, deliberate obstruction, violence, including physical violence. Yes. Now, these are things listed here. Do you agree with that? Very, very much so. Very much so. I, I think a lot of them are very critical. And as you have pointed out clearly, uh, one of the things I would say is um, when you look at the structure of the women in politics, 
most of them, and I'm not saying all of them, actually they're a very tiny percentage anyway, you find out that most of them are there, not necessarily by merit, but by who they know or who they are married to or who they are associated to. And when we have that type of representation in government, it's just an extension of what ex or, you know, already exists in the status quo. And uh, when we talk about violence, just like you said, uh, what are some of the reasons women don't come out? They think of their children, their grandchildren, uh, their, their aunties and all that. And they think of the fact that if I die in this matter, <laughs> who will take care of these ones? And I think it makes them a bit more cautious. Uh, cautious. But again, we're looking for leaders that are ready to die for the cause. And Nigerians are not usually ready to shed blood for the cause. <laughs> so I then asked this, when you say we're looking for leaders that are ready to die for the cause, yes. then some will wonder, how is it that I mean, this is not the first time we're having females come out as presidential aspirants. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the polls, we find out that they got one vote, less than 100 votes. How is it that the women did not galvanize support for that one woman to say, we support you, we may not win, but we should let the world know that we are behind you. Why? I think communication plays a very strong role in anything you're doing. Uh, one of the questions I think a lot of times we don't get answers to is the why. Why are you coming out? Let me understand you. Let me be sure that you represent what I believe in. I know that even for the men, it's not as if everybody has a clear message, but you will agree with me that for the men, the bag of rice is working. The five naira, ten naira bag of salt is working. And that is the capacity that most women don't have. They don't have that type of financial weight to be able to do this. And that is why it looks as if people do listen to the men or support the men. It's not necessarily that people support the men. People are just following the money. And most of the women that really do have the heart do not have that type of financial capacity to do all that. So I would say the best way to now be able to reach to the hearts of the people is to be more strategic in the messages, in the, the way you present yourself, the way you come out, who are you dialoguing with. As uh, we will all say, yes, we all voted. Uh, yes, we all saw that there was a woman, but I think as at that time, again, there was no understanding to the why. To the why. Okay, yes. when we come back, we'll look at how is it that the why will hinder a woman from supporting a woman. Yes. We'll be back shortly, don't go away. Thank you. <laughs>